uh, once again, I want to welcome you to the Palabra Church of Charlotte. It is the place we call the center of mercy. Uh, it's a very minute church out of the big church. You must have seen the our headquarters, how big the church is. And then by the grace of the Lord, we have branches in Washington, D.C. We have in Arlington. We are up in the uh, Mifia, and uh, we are in Tennessee, and uh, all other states, Philadelphia, and all other states like that. So when you see us here, uh, we are just very minute part of the big church, Washington, D.C. It is because we cannot be going to Washington, D.C. every Sunday. Our pastor decided that we should be gathering together here, too. And then, Almighty God, we as you come, you will not go empty-handed in Jesus' name. And it is my belief that, uh, despite that we are very large, you will stay with us, and then you will be bringing other people too in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, our intention was to be using the goodness uh, what is the name of the school uh, anyway in that town and then but because of covid the financial situation we decided that okay god has given us this house what can we just uh dedicate it to almighty god but as far as we able to settle all those things covid and then financial situation, it is best for us to move down to that place. But God is going to help us in Jesus. So as of now, we are gathering here every Sunday and Monday. And then all other program online, I will let you know so that you will be uh, going through our phone. We have about four program, very mighty, powerful four program online that we are doing and uh, god will continue to help you in jesus name uh i have some member that can never play with like lisa the metric they have been the member of the church for more than six years rain sun fire they are here so i want to appreciate them for their loyalty then you can see behind you is uh matter uh one of our member introduced her to us and by the grace of the lord she has never failed she has continued moya is another my my close friend <laughs> god bless you moya let us let us continue so he has been the member and then we are praying for him we are doing everything that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, he will see God more than the way he is seeing him in Jesus' name. And, and you're upstairs, there's a man walking on. Very unfortunately, he's very used to alcohol. I've been walking on him seriously. But I know God is going to answer my prayer in Jesus' name. He has been with us once. Uh, what is his name that follow you out today? Uh, Perry. Perry? I mean Perry in your house. Uh, Perry. <laughs> the one that he follow you when you are Perry. He has always been coming to the church but because of friends he was great influence. But I'm praying for every one of them. Uh, as you come tomorrow again you will see some of members again and then uh the metric we are in the church we are in the church and then you will see the one of them so that's part of the challenges we face but with prayer god bless you with prayer with everything unfortunately my wife is not around today and then with prayer with everything i know the will of god for everyone will be achieved and then uh, there will be
increases in heaven, that despite all the others, we are able to stand. We do not shake. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will not miss anyone of us, and then they will not miss us in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Do not forget uh, God's so love those people who are uh, uh, I don't want to use this word, but you will pardon me to use it. Uh, who are not a light, they are so proud. But those people who people think they can never be somebody, God loves them so much. So if we are looking at all that area, we will see that God loves us so much. And the grace of the Lord will be with us in Jesus' name. So it is my belief that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you have come, you have seen. You have seen the difference between church. You have seen the difference between church. And then you have seen my uh, very, pardon me to say this, my hard working in your environment. And you have seen my tears. You have seen the reason why I'm doing it. And I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. God is going to answer our prayer in Jesus' name. Every one of us will have the reason to glorify the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. I haven't said that today. Before our service, I will pray. After our prayer, we will watch a film. Then we go to this message. So let us rise up to pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our mighty Father, our mighty Father, we glorify Your name. We thank You, Lord. Because we are the fire that consumes power of darkness. We thank you, Lord, because of the grace you have given to every one of us. We thank you, Lord, because of your hand upon us. King of King, we are here this morning. We pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you are going to uplift us in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, by the power and the blood of Jesus, no one among us will go empty handed in Jesus' name. More than our expectation, you are going to bless us. And your grace is going to be sufficient for us. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. We shall open our aim to M47. M47. Number 47. Just as God who reigns on high speak to men in days gone by, so the Lord is calling men today, and my brother, this is true. Whatsoever he says to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey. If you are in the Savior's hands, you must do as he commands, for there is no other gospel way. Never put the message by, never stop the reason why. When the Savior speaks to you, just obey. If for mansion's prayer you sigh, in that land beyond the sky, after time with you has passed away, though the way you may not see, Christ is calling, follow me. Faith and duty both we cry, just obey. Just obey, just obey. It's the way, God's way. When his message comes to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey.
that's land beyond the sky. After time with you has passed away. Oh, the way you may not see, Christ is calling all of me. Faith and duty, what we cry, just obey. Just obey. Just obey. He's the way. God's way. My dear, what is actually wrong with you? I noticed that you've been very angry since the service ended. You didn't even say a single word on our way home from the church. You are not talking. What is wrong with you? Everything is wrong with you. I mean, so many things are wrong with you. I mean, why would you allow the devil to walk through you this way? Why? What did I do this time? You now have the God, dear Fondry, to stand on the pulpit of God and tell a bunch of lies without any prick in your conscience. Do you even have conscience at all? I mean, where is your conscience? Where? Which lie have I told this time? Everything you said today was far from truth. And you know it. Ah! Hey, what the God? You said, you, you, you said, oh, you love your wife and the children. You said you gave us so much attention. You spend your money on us. Ah! You even have the God to lie that 
You take us on vacations and spend and lavish your money on us. You, Pastor Fred. And you, you even have the effrontery to encourage the church members to do the same thing, to behave the way you've been behaving. Meanwhile, everything you said was far from truth. Huh? Is that all? Oh, no. No. When last did you speak with your daughter, goodness, in school? When last? Oh, does she even want to hear your voice? Does she want to hear your voice? You are a bad example here at home. You are rotting inside, but you look good outside. I still don't understand. How? I don't get it. I, I don't know why they chose you, you of all people. I don't know why they would make them to give you the privilege to minister at the family conference. You are. Is that all? No. That is not all. But who, who am I to be engaging in this kind of discussion with you? Do I even have the time? If you want to hear more, you go to your God to reveal yourself, the real you to you. Why do I need to be wasting my time engaging in this kind of discussion with somebody who is not even ready to change? Why? I don't have that time. And the people that they started well when they first got married, husband and wife, brother and sister, how sacred that was, how godly that was, how gracious that was. But, you know, day by day, some things began to creep into their lives. I love my wife. I love my children. I always take them out on vacation frequently. That's my wife. You can ask her. I always make them happy at all time. Ah, ah, daddy. What a big lie. Daddy, this is too much. But how can a man of God mount up a pulpit to say that but that lie? Ah, I don't pray to be like my dad to my children. No, never. Ah. Yes. Oh, but no, hear me. Jesus. Ah. Hello, Betty. Hello, Pastor. Why are you calling me at this time of the night? Pastor, I'm missing you. But uh, you could have just called during the day and not during the night. I'm sorry, Pastor. I actually tried to wait during the counseling section, at least to take a close gaze at you, but I couldn't wait. Uh, you see, uh, see me at the church office tomorrow morning, okay? I will get to your office tomorrow when I'm coming for the workers' meeting. I love you, Pastor. I, I, I love you too, Betty. And say me well to our women coordinator. <laughs> they make your marriage honorable. Don't make it dishonorable. And then it says on the bed on the file. And then it says if there is any fornication, any uncleanness, any defilement, any adultery, the all mongers and the adulterers, what will happen? Tell me out loud. God will judge. No wonder there has been no peace in this family. And there can never be peace. Because it is not just possible for you to manage a strange woman and your home together. It's not possible. It's not. <sighs> woman, why are you always complaining? Huh? Do you know if I went to cancel a church member that is in a serious need? Eh? And you needed to enter into the bedroom to do that? Oh, for your information, I had all your conversations. Remember, we're in the middle of the night. Obviously, she will see you when she comes for workers' meeting. 
in the church office. Does the line sound familiar? No wonder. No wonder you always leave the house earlier. You always get to church before time without waiting for me. No wonder. So this is the reason. This is the reason. Woman, your assumptions are wrong assumptions. <laughs> they are not correct assumptions. Why should you be intoxicated, my son, with forbidden woman and embrace the bosom of an adulteress? <sighs> Proverbs chapter 5 verse 20. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. And call insight your intimate friend to keep you from forbidden woman, from adulteress with a smooth word. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 4. Like this in my family. Ah, for your mercy's sake, Lord. Save my husband. Save my husband, oh God. Lord, deliver him, oh Lord. Have mercy on him, Lord. His soul must not perish in hell, oh God. Let him not be destroyed by the spirit of adultery in the name of Jesus. What has come over me? What has come over me? Why am I doing this to my wife and children? What has suddenly happened to my life? Oh, oh, oh. God, please. To me. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and verse 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Is telling us that adulterers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. Unclean people, unrighteous people, immoral people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Is telling us that even after the cross, in this dispensation of grace, that those who live in adultery, in fornication, they miss and they forfeit. The kingdom of God. He says, don't you know that God will punish all unrighteousness, all immorality. Look at verse 15. Know you not that your body, your bodies are the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. No, remove from me the Adamic nature and sin and its consequences, Lord. Help me, Lord God, in Jesus. Your mercy is big for my husband, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> ah, I snatched you away from the pit of hell. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Lord, restore my hope. Bring your soul back to you, oh God. This hope must not crash. Oh. This marriage will not collapse. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> we have proved the truth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jesus. I'm very 
really sorry, my dear. Jesus. I'm sorry for all I put you through. Please find a place in your heart to forgive. Ah, Jesus. My eyes are now opened. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, thank you, Jesus, oh God. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> God. Charles. Charles. Ah, God. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Oh, God, we are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. What's the problem, Mom? There is no problem. The Lord has done it. The Lord has restored our home. Your dad is back. Your dad is back. Dad, is that true? Is that true that we shall now be happy in this house? Ah, oh, God. Yes, my son. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, sir. Is it true <laughs> that I do not need to lock myself up in my room because of the fear of sighting you? <laughs> Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. <laughs> oh, this is good. Ah, is just... Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my dear, this is good. Yeah. Honestly, this is good. When last have we sat together like this? You know, and have this kind of chat discussion. <laughs> Devil has failed. Amen. He has lost the battle. Amen. Jesus. Completely. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hello, Sister Betty. Good morning. Hello, dear. Hope you slept well. Of course, I did. I slept well. I hope you've not forgotten our appointment today. That appointment is cancelled. Somebody would want to greet you. And who is that? Hello, my sister. Sister Betty. Fine, fine, ma'am. Fine, ma'am. <laughs> oh, you don't need to be walked up. Given him. Our home is back. Our home has been restored. Praise God. I just want to tell you something, Sister Betty. I want to plead with you to please stop calling my husband. Please. And find a way of reconciling with your husband. Most importantly, with God. And I know God will help you. God bless you, my home of our children, the home of our cousin, the more of our sibling, it will not be destroyed in Jesus' name. And every area whereby they are experiencing this, God will visit them and they will build their home back in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we shall go further by reading from the, from open our hymn to him 113, him 113.
just ten or seen driving out the fools who drink thy heart within. Go and tell the story, tell it far and wide, how the Lord of glory for the sinner died, and the souls that hear Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. Mark. The Gospel according to St. Mark. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples follow him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk, and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went round about the villages teaching. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits, and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only no scrip, no bread, 
no money in their purse, but be shod with sandals, and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into an house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you, when ye depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils, and anointed with oil many that were sick, and healed them. And King Herod heard of him, for his name was spread abroad, and he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works to show forth themselves in him. Others said that it is Elias, and others said that it is a prophet, or as one of the prophets. But when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John, and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him, and would have killed him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man, and unholy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things, and heard him gladly. And when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee, and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced, and pleased Herod, and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. And he sware unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom. And she went forth, and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king, and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceeding sorry. Yet for his oath's sake, and for their sakes which sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner, and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison, and brought his head in a charger, and gave it to the damsel, and the damsel gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard of it, they came and took up his corpse, and laid it in a tomb. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus, and told him all things, both what they had done, and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship, privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and outwent them, and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat? He saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say, Five and two fishes. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks, by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven, and blessed, and brake the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat, and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did eat of the loaves were about five thousand men. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship, and to go to the other side before, unto Bethsaida, while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. 
and they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gennesaret, and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him, and ran through that whole region round about, and began to carry about in beds those that were sick, where they heard he was.